What is up, everybody? It is Alex from Heavy New York calling from the quarantine zone again. And this time we are joining Four Stroke Baron for dinner clearly tonight. Thank you all so much for being here. It's great to have you guys here. Oh, yeah, man. Thank you, dude. Yeah. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I got to tell you, I'm really freaking hungry right now. We're not even a full minute into this interview yet. So, uh, dude, we're just, yeah, we're, uh, we were doing some dinner tonight. We're doing rotisseries. Just having fun. Oh, that's pretty fucking metal, I got to say. This is the most metal yeah. interview I've ever done. Yeah. yeah. But it's so awesome to have you here. I was just listening to the brand new album, Classics. And to tell you the truth, I think that's the perfect title of this album because it really does serve as a classic already. I cannot wait for the rest of the world of music to discover this album because it's already a classic for 2021. What was the thought oh, process... Yeah, what was the thought process behind the making of this? Was, was your intention just to continue where you left off after Planet Silver Screen, or was this kind of like maybe a new beginning for Four Stroke Baron in a way, and kind of like stepping into more uncharted territory? We, uh, I think we, uh, so I think from the beginning, we kind of, uh, we always had the thought of, we just kind of want to go insane and go as hard as, uh, as hard as possible with whatever we're doing. We, we have this feeling that there's a weird lull right now. And no, you know, no specific bands, really. But there's a lull in music. And we, we kind of just felt like, you know, we want to just, we want to, I don't know, we want to kick it up a notch. We want to write something that, in our opinion, is as insane as, as, insane as can possibly go. So, uh, yeah, we wrote classics. That's... It's, not really a, it's not really a continuation of anything. It's just this is the next, uh, this is the next thing in Fort Show Baron. Hell yeah. yeah. It's kind of like, uh, yeah, I mean, we're like, we like listening to music nowadays. It's more like, uh, it's kind of a thing with, uh, we feel like a lot of bands with social media these days are kind of like, they're trying to do a thing with, uh, they almost, they almost seem like they're cornered. It's like they're, everyone knows their grandma and their mom is watching and listening to their music. And it's kind of a, uh, it's made everyone uh, too self-conscious. I could a little bit. Like, I agree. And it's every like everything's getting kind of dull. It's weird. Yeah, I I see what you're saying, and kind of like going into that sort of moment of insanity that you wanted to portray on this album. What obviously that was sort of like a preconceived idea, but in terms of the sound itself, was there any like thing that you were trying to, like a specific sound you were trying to achieve, or was it all just kind of like rolling the dice and a lot of experimentation and trial and error? No, I would, I would say 100% experimentation, trial and error. Our, uh, I mean, I, I don't know other bands writing process. Ours was, uh, let's get together. Let's have a, let's have a couple of good ideas and let's see where they take us. And that was it. And you combined a lot of different styles in your music uh, all together as well. I mean, I see people who could appreciate many different genres. Like, I feel like the best way to describe your music, it's almost kind of like a combination of rotisserie chicken and whipped cream. I feel like that's almost like the best way to describe your music. I don't know where I got that analogy from, but. Well, so. No, it's what it sounds like. It's, it's, so we, uh, it's kind of like a, when we, we approach our songs, we start with like a, the foundation of a, Know, like bass and drums get it like a like the meaty part kind of going where it's a a good solid foundation and then we kind of slowly add the uh the whipped cream the finishing touch like the, the sweetness when are you gonna and, add and you know uh, and funny enough so the rotisserie chicken whipped cream thing it's a it's a reno it's a reno delicacy i don't know if have you ever been to reno nevada no i mean uh my favorite oh, yeah, sorry nevada it's nevada i'd say nevada Depends, dude. Yeah, it depends. depends. Uh, I mean, all, all I know about Reno, Nevada is that my favorite porn star's brothel is based out there. And I, I learned that upon, uh, I learned that from Google, may I add. But like, uh, but no, I have not been there and I had no idea. I learned something new every day. It's it's great. So this is, this is a Reno thing. So you do the, you do the rotisserie chicken and the whipped cream. And, and the, and the reasoning behind it is because the rotisserie chicken is very hot. You do the whipped cream on the rotisserie chicken to cool your bite down. Before you take the bite. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the same way I have. It's cool the bite down. Cool the bite. And it's more like you want you want to get the skin on it. Because the that's where it's like a sweet savory thing. Oh, dude, I need more. More than that? It's a it's a sweet savory thing, dude. It's just a 
We normally don't do that much, but since it's a heavy New York interview. You go heavy with the whipped cream. See, back here in New York, whenever we wanted a cool down chicken, we would just blow on it, but I find this to be more of a yeah. unique way. It tastes, Wait, well, this tastes better. Yeah. We'll blow on it. Yeah, it, it, this just tastes better. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Yeah, whipped cream, whipped cream blow, it's all the same thing. Yeah, you know, just blowing just as much on it. This is getting really awkward. But anyway, uh, as I was saying, the first two singles that you released off of uh, the new album classics, Friday Night and uh, Sundowner, or Sundowner, can this almost be like a good representation of what the entirety of classics is going to sound like for people who haven't heard the album yet? Or is there a lot more to be discovered? That's just the tip of the iceberg. I would say tip of the iceberg for sure. Mm. Classics, uh I mean, it's no, it's no, be, it's no bullshit. When we were like, we we wanted to, we wanted to push it as far as we could. I mean, there was nights where we, uh, we were like, fuck, I don't even remember what we were writing, but I think it might be awesome. And we check it out, and it kicks ass. And then we build upon, we were just building upon those ideas and see where they would take us. Um, so there's a lot of new shit that we've never even done or never tried to do uh, in the past with our other with our other albums. Uh, we we clearly we 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 kept some of the you know we kept some of the uh, you know the four stroke Baron feel to to certain aspects of it, but I think I think for the most part it's uh it's almost like a brand new sound for four stroke Baron. Okay. And, and uh, honestly, like uh, the singles we pick, it's uh, cause we we did think about it for the singles. Like so, we chose Friday Night first because it has like a. I don't know, it's like uh the structure is a little more simple it's it's catchy but it's more like uh i don't know it's for lack of a better way to say it like easier to get into it's kind of like a it's normally structured has like a good melody uh and sundowner we purposely picked as the next one which actually helped from steve from prosthetic right, and ej yeah they uh that that one's a little weirder and experimental uh, which have you heard the whole album yet, or just the singles? I've heard, I've heard the whole thing, and it's pretty badass. Okay. I was asking this question. No, nice, for, dude. I was asking this question for people who haven't heard it yet. You know, bringing some right, spoilers. Okay, yeah, because yeah, uh, some of the other songs, they're like they're weirder and more like approach different aspects of our sound. So like, uh, it's the singles don't really sum up the album, but it's more just we we think they're good entry points where they kind of. Uh, between Friday Night Sundowner and then the Kara single that's coming out, it's they. It's almost like encapsulates the yeah, entire sound. Yeah, encapsulate the whole, the whole experience in a way. But it's it's almost like those are entry points for different parts. There's like there's super catchy songs. There's the more experimental ones, and those kind of cover a good a good range for it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, for the whole album. Yep. Well, you know what I find unique about this album, and I find this very difficult to do, but good job at doing this for the album. You made every song, I would say, stand out. Like, each song works well on its own, but I feel like they have more context when you listen to the album as a whole. Like, if you start right. off with Radium and you end with uh, Russian Thought, like, that you know, gives so much context to the entirety of classics. But I also think that the songs do work very well separately. It's not like, you know, one track is sort of like an interlude or an intro or an outro. So excellent work on doing that because I find that to be very difficult. I don't consider this just an – I think, again, classics is the per per perfect way to describe this uh, album because they're all very much classics. Hell yeah, man. I it, man. Hell yeah. That's awesome. Now – has your other albums, like from, such as Planet, A Silver Screen, or King Radio, like did you take maybe a similar approach to those particular albums, or like being that you know we're all different artists at different times, and you know we all grow and evolve so much? How would you say that? Like I know it's kind of a cliche question to ask, but you know going into this sort of chaotic preconceived idea for classics, did you not do that for the other albums that you've done? That's that's, that's a good question. It's a uh, I'd say with. So kind of our trajectory was, so we have all of our albums. There's the EP, there's King Radio, Planet Silver Screen, and then Classics. It's a, it's like Planet Silver Screen. Like, or so starting with the EP, we, we started and we're like, hey, let's make something weird. And we had no audience whatsoever. We literally put it up for Bandcamp for free. Nothing, no, no fans, no nothing. We didn't have social media. And then, uh, we sent it to Cloud Kicker. You're probably familiar with Cloud Kicker. I've heard of them, yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, he he shared it, and then that gave us maybe like fifty fans. And uh, so after the EP, we're like, hey, we got a couple fans. Let's make a full length album because we just started with an EP. So we did a full length with King Radio, and that was honestly our first time where we're like, hey, let's try and make like a full album experience. And then uh, we released that for free on Bandcamp, and then Steve Joe from Prosthetic he discovered that, and then we got signed made our debut with Planet Silverscreen with Prosthetic. And then, so with Pl- uh, Planet Silverscreen, we kind of had this mindset of, this is our first album we're purposely putting out to the world, to kind of like show who we are. So with Planet Silverscreen, we had this idea of making it uh, really tight, kind of. It's like a tight, really a- uh... I got bees in my food, hold on. Yeah, sorry, yeah, we're covered in bees here. But we got a Planet Silverscreen, we had this idea of making it really like a tight, uh, wrapped up experiment uh, ex- experience and then with classics we kind of when we started writing it like right around uh it was right around when the pandemic started it was like a like march of around march 2020 and uh like dude let's just take it as far as we can dude, and just go go crazy and then kind of utilize everything we know how to do already but we hadn't we hadn't really uh pushed it as far as we could take it right yeah and, and especially like you mentioned planet silver screen as so did i but like uh the title track of that album that was the first uh, four stroke baron song i've actually ever heard that was the album i discovered four stroke baron on and then i went back and nice. discovered the earlier stuff and like that was almost kind of like shoegazy in a way it almost kind of like i've always said it was as if like uh it was like a very angry radiohead radiohead not writing sad music it was radiohead writing mean music so right yeah almost as if like they all discovered hardcore for the first time or something like that <laughs> yeah <laughs> nice yeah. Fuck yeah dude that's a good way that's a good way to describe it yeah. i like that that's awesome and and almost see seemed... what no oh, sorry so <laughs> jumping on the chicken uh so matt and i get some quill it's right. uh, so like matt and i we i don't know we 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 obviously like listen to music we're musicians but we're kind of we just, there's nothing in the state of music nowadays at all that like intrigues us. So we just, uh, we, we both like melody, we both like rhythm. So we just chose to kind of pick those two things as like our, our strengths. Yeah. And just kind of emphasize from, those more there. than, I think too many bands dance around like a concept. That too many bands dance around like, oh, we're trying to be a, a, a higher art form we want we want to tell the listener about the craziest new thing that's happening and they do some stupid like just self-indulgent bullshit like psychological spiritual concept where they talk about uh just i don't know a dumb shit that everyone has heard before and it doesn't matter and so matt and i just go dude let's just like focus on just let's teaching. tell stories about taking acid and getting lost in a casino Yes, yeah, so just catchy melody, rhythm, and just uh, we 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 every time we're making music, we think about like the experience. Just when you listen to it, being fun, right? But Definitely. also also more than that. But it's not some self indulgent bullshit thing. It's just uh, it's just what we like to do. Well, see, I love concept albums, like in the way. But you know, I grew up with My Chemical Romance. All their music was very cla- uh, concept driven, and I love Fear Factory, and their music is very concept driven. And I love mastodon and their music is also very concept driven but that's the thing what i think about four stroke baron is that like it's just about the song itself and there's really no need to analyze it i feel like this your artwork speaks for itself enough you know what i mean like nice man yeah Yeah, i appreciate it man thanks yeah and uh like it's funny you mentioned that sort of like just the song itself and you know just kind of like you know not trying to overthink it too much because Obviously, you want to try to capture a moment with each song, but you know sometimes you're working on a song for days, for weeks. If you're Tool, you're working on a song for 13 years. So, like, uh, do you find it maybe like the longer that you're working on a song, the harder it is to kind of like capture that moment? Yes. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. That's percent true. Yep. No, it, it, it's it's no it's no bullshit or no lie when we say it's it's this weird it's this weird we we only we only describe it as like a weird vibration not vibration like a weird frequency that we 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 both function at where we can go through and we'll get all of these ideas for all of these different songs and at one point you know we'll have 27 different song ideas 
that we start dwindling down and it's it, it all it all just we, we make it come together and if it, there's an idea where we feel like we're pushing it to the point where it's like so what do you think comes next what feels natural what feels right when it gets to that point we just say dude scrap that because it sucks yeah and we get rid of it yeah it's it's, it's actually a it's kind of funny you ask that because like a lot of our we're writing it's like a we, we we talk about it a lot it's like we come up you're writing something and you come up with into like a dead end like you'll be you'll have it you start with a riff or a drum beat and then you start to try and build a song and then sometimes you'll come up with a you'll hit a dead end and then every time we hit a dead end we try not to acknowledge that as a dead end or get caught up in writer's block or bullshit like that we just uh we just power through it and our we have like a little philosophy that if we don't know what to do next let's just push it further than like an idea we haven't even thought of like we just push it a little further than we're comfortable add, with add electronics to it add add crazy whatever we can think of whatever can make it weird because when you're when you're making a song you can always change it it's not like the first idea you come up with is that's your last idea yeah so if, if we're making a song and we have a we have that a good little good, riff dude. what's that that looks good it's tasty and then like say we have a good little riff uh and it's not it's not working out we we like we're trying to make another riff on top of it and we we're hanging out for an hour and we're, we can't really figure out where the song's going we acknowledge that that's happening and then we like just push through it and add like a weird part and sometimes it sucks sometimes it's great and uh, a lot of times it sucks and we got to do it again yeah, you, ever, uh, you ever worry it's that's that's the beauty of it dude you just you can always just uh keep going dude. Yep. yeah and you mentioned like the hitting the dead ends there's no doubt in my mind that that is how the breakdown as we know it today was created you know it just stops yeah. dead right. in its tracks and yeah then... it's the dead end yep what the what do we do next and you go ting and then uh you do the next part yep yeah. but are you ever worried that the stuff you scrap may be a b-side one day and just be the biggest hit you guys ever had we don't worry about it <laughs> but we do save the parts okay if they're good I think I think him and I have a pretty good ear for what is actually good or not when we're making it. So like, we have a couple songs that uh, aren't released that we have, and like we we keep them just to see we can save for later. But the weird thing is when we record an album, uh, we don't have a lot of B sides. It's honestly maybe like two B sides per album. Oh really? Most of what we make, we just uh, end up refining and keep and just release it. Right. So there's not, there's not a, there's honestly, in our entire, however many years we've been doing it, there's maybe several. Four, yeah, maybe four several. or five, four or five B sides that we have. Do you, I've always said though, like when a musician dies, and I hope that doesn't happen to you guys anytime soon, but like uh, when a musician, you're on your fuck, you're on your way, dude. <laughs> you're. You're on your way. I've always said that their hard drives should be like in the rock and roll. Like there should always be just like a hard drive of every musician's. Like, you know, back in the day, yeah. people keep musicians or artists notebooks or sketchbooks. But in the future, it's going to be hard drives that are on display. Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. You don't want to see Kirk's hard drive, though. So that thing should probably be trashed. <laughs> he's got a he, he's got that thing on a on a kill. If he's dead, that thing's going to burn for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and the final question I wanted to ask you is, is um, when it comes to writing the music and, you know, getting that inspiration, do you find it easier when you're more like in the company of each other? You know, I do like it sounds like it's a very collaborative effort. Or do you find it maybe easier to come up with new ideas when you're more like alone? Isolation is a great fuel for creativity after all. Uh, mostly together. Yep. But uh, sometimes like with both him and I, there's a. Uh, Little ideas we come up with down there. Cause like him and I practice every day uh, and just kind of jam. So like every now and then he'll have a little beat that we end up making a song. And sometimes I'll have a riff that's going in. It's like him and I play every day. So when we're jamming or practicing, we'll, we'll get little ideas that uh, sometimes we'll show each other and be like, hey, with this. But honestly, a good, 90% of it is just when we're together. We, it, we we see each other most, it's probably three times a week. Are you familiar with C4? The the explosive? Well, it's kind of, it's like the energy, the energy powder. The pre-workout. The pre-workout. Uh, 
Yeah, I, I wanted to Google that. I, I would Google that right now, but in, given the state of the world, I doubt that's a really good idea. Yeah, you might not want to. So just just trust trust me when I tell you that it's a it's like a pre workout, and clearly me and Kirk are in top physical condition. Uh, so one thing that really fueled classics in general was we would do a scoop of C four and a shot of Coors Light. We'd mix that up. We would do like maybe five or six of those, and we would write. And that, that's what really fueled the, 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 the writing process for classics. And I would say that probably 90, 90%, like Kirk was saying, of, of classics, probably 90% of what we write is, is a collaborative effort. I mean, yeah, we, yeah, we're together, like, uh, we'll sit there he'll, and we have our jam space. He'll have his drums, or he'll even just be slapping on his knees and thighs, just jamming, uh, like, drum ideas. And I'll have, like, guitar riffs. And then a lot of times we, so one of the ways we write is we record while we write, right? So we'll sit in front of the computer and uh, we'll I'll just have the guitar. Matt will be at the drums or just like sitting there in the chair, just kind of slapping his legs and we'll come up with an idea. And then once we have an idea that we think is worth pursuing, then we'll, uh, we'll start recording it. We do like a rough demo version and then uh, just kind of go from there and just keep going with it. But it's ninety percent of the time we're together writing it. It's all. It's fair to say that like the computer is just as much of an instrument as any of the instruments. It's, prob it's probably a guitar. It's dude. probably more of an instrument, honestly. Yeah, yeah. it's like a, it's, a whole, <laughs> it's another person. Yep. And it's our third band member. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. And so I. It's like a, yeah. Like as long as you have like a, a computer there to record your because that's, that's where the computer comes in for us. For us is like you get an idea and you can record a demo version of it. And it doesn't have to be great because we don't record it with the idea that like anyone's going to hear this. It's more just a, you record the idea just to hear it for yourself. So we record a little riff with some shitty little demo drum and then. And then just keep refining yeah, it. See how it sounds. And then kind of like go in on like what the song could become. And then from there you can, if, if you from there you can get like a like a, a demo version of the song pretty quickly, and then uh, it's you you kind of like get to eschew some of the recording process or like the writing process, where you can you can think of the song and then put it out there to hear for yourself as a rough version, and then refine it slowly until you know exactly the structure that the song should be and what the melody should be. And then after that, that's when you start focusing on uh, getting like the actual studio finished product going. Definitely. So uh, before we go, I want to thank you both so much for your time today. Thank you for inviting. This is definitely every band I interview dinner. now. Every band I interview has to top this interview. This is the I'm not even kidding right now. This is amazing. Hey, man, next time you come to Reno, dude, we'll uh, rotisserie chicken, a little bit of ready whip and some sequel. It's a, it's 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 a good night, man. It's, it's a Reno recipe. Do the third bedroom waiting for you, dude. We got a third bedroom waiting for you. Thanks, I appreciate that. But I think those bedrooms are going to be at the at my favorite adult. Never mind, actually. Um. Anyway, so uh. <laughs> uh well, hey, hey, we can get you a bedroom there. Yeah. Uh -oh. I promise. Please do, please do. Uh, Garrett, Garrett, goddamn <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Is there just uh anything else that you would like there's to? There's bees. Ev there's bees everywhere. We're surrounded by bees, dude. Oh man, I, I don't envy you right oh, now. Sh oh shit! See, oh dude, that one's dying. Kill it. Hold on, hold on, please. Oh dude, he's gonna release fair. Oh dude. Pheromones, dude. Pheromones? Is that what? Be surrounded by bee pheromones, dude. Yep. Anyway, sorry. Continuing. <laughs> Is there just uh, bees, man? Is there just anything else with Four Stroke Baron that you would like to promote with the release of classics? Uh, right now, that tour with uh, Sarah Longfield is still on, right? Yeah. Yep. And we have another potential tour that we haven't announced yet because it hasn't been solidified. But we yeah. in Europe, so we may be heading to Europe too. So let's uh, let's rage in Europe too. Awesome. We're ready. And we I stay ready. That way, we don't have to get ready. Awesome. And uh, please. We just want to let every other fan know that they probably suck ass. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Just uh, do your. But we love them all. But we also love them all. If you really want to, if, if you really want to. If they want to tour with us, if they want to tour with us, then we like them. If they don't, then they suck ass. <laughs> uh, if you really want to piss some people off in New York when you come here with Sarah Longfield, 
uh, the venue you're playing serves pizza. If you really want to trigger some New Yorkers, put some pineapples on that shit. Oh, Extra man. fucking pineapple. Let's do it. So we're going to bring some little Caesars from Reno and ship it to uh, New York, and we're going to put it in the box. And, uh, and it's got to be only pineapple. You're going to have to repeat that because the internet cut out as he said that. What were you saying? We're going to we're going to order a bunch of little Caesars pizza from here in Reno and ship it in a flat rate box covered in pineapple and serve it in New York. New York. Yeah. I'm not even kidding. You will get more shit for that in New York than talking shit about Wu-Tang Clan. So. <laughs> oh wait, there's the dog. She's eating with us too. Awesome. Oh. All right, man. Hey, are you going to be are you coming to the show in New York? Oh, hell we'll yeah. Feed you pineapple pizza. Hell yeah. We'll feed your ass pineapple pizza and we'll freak out together. Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah, hit us up, dude. Yeah, we'll make it happen. Definitely. But uh, thank you guys so much for this amazing interview. Everybody, we are here with Four Stroke Baron. Be sure to check out the brand new album, Classics, coming out on Prosthetic Records very soon. This is Alex from Heavy New York. We will see you next time. Oh, yeah.